Off for contractors trading tips in your truck. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how your to-do list is probably killing you and what to do about it. So profit for contractors, man, we are all about helping contractors get more profits, more control, getting their profits to pay for the freedom, giving them the systems, giving them the tools, giving them the right insights to be the leader they need to be to get their profits to pay for their freedom. All right, so I just finished up doing a little workout, just trying to cool down. I sweat like freaking crazy when, uh, whenever I do a, a workout. Uh, it takes me a while to cool down. Um, back in the day, my buddies used to say, hey, Houston, you got the Ebola? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Because like an hour after working out, I'd still be sweating. Anyways, there's some personal info. So let's talk a little about this to-do list. I want to give you guys three stories of, uh, of champion CEO contractors that have really taken their business to the next level. And one of the key things that they did was getting, you know, the right handle on how to manage all the things that they got to do. So first story is a really great guy, Steve. And um, you know, one of the biggest challenges that Steve had was just like massive anxiety, stress out all the time, because in all honesty, he just had way too much going on in his head. Now, the reality is that in a contracting business, there's a shitload of stuff that's going on. Uh, and, and there always will be, right? It's just part of running a job. It's part of running a contracting business. Uh, any business or most businesses, it's like that, but especially in the trades where you've got to order material, you got to control the jobs, you got to do the quotes, you got, man, you got so many things you got to do. And so what tends to happen is that we build up this massive to-do list, right? And this to-do list just keeps going and going and, and growing. Oh, this is funny. I just worked out, now I'm passing uh, the beer store. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyways, temptations are great. So look, Here's, here's what happened with Steve. He, he just didn't know how to get control of things. And that to-do list was like, that was like kryptonite. I mean, every time he added something to that to-do list, it was painful. It was like, you know, he almost wanted to start avoiding the, the to-do list because it didn't help. It hindered it, you know, gave more anxiety. It gave more stress. So what did he do? Well, we had a quick little, um, again, all these are quick little chats, guys, quick little strategies. Um, you know, small little things that really, really uh, make a huge difference. So, so stay with me here. So what did Steve do? Well, one of the things that you've got to recognize guys is that there's a whole bunch of stuff that you do in a day that's actually not on the to-do list. So what the hell does that got to do anything, with anything? What is brushing your teeth, getting out of bed, opening your eyes? What do all those things have to do with this? It has everything to do with this. You see, when we wake up, just think about you waking up this morning. It's a beautiful day here, gorgeous uh, Saturday. Um, you wake up and you've got to open up your eyes. You've got to get out of bed. You've got to hear that word too. You've got to, I hopefully, I mean, this is a big thing for me. I, I love brushing my teeth, flossing my teeth. It's just one of those things. Um, anyways, that's weird. But um, there's a whole list of to-dos. You, know, you got to get breakfast. You got to start the truck. You got to, right? You, all these things. But you know what's funny? You don't really think about those things, do, though, do you? You don't think of those things being on a to-do list. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is because you've created habits. Unconsciously, you've created habits. If you line up all the things that you do habitually, even outside of business, just things that you do, you know, like, okay, um, you know, you, you, you walk to the truck, right? You uh, put out the garbage, you like all these things that you habitually do, um, even when you're driving your vehicle, right? I mean, you automatically turn on your signal, right? Just driving your vehicle. Think about all the things that you do to drive that vehicle safely, right? You look in the mirror, you, um, you look at the gauges, you, you like, you're doing all these things. You're doing literally thousands of things, guys. I'm not joking, thousands of things. If you're to list them all up, I mean, if you're to break them all down, bite-sized pieces, like, you know, you know, I, I, I raised my body out of the bed, you know, I turned to the left, I put my feet on the ground, I took a step, I took another step. You don't think of that shit because you created habits, unconsciously in a lot of cases created habits, okay? That make it such that you just do them automatically. So you can do that with your business, guys, okay? So what did Steve do in this first story is, I, we chatted and I said, Steve, look, some of the things that we got to do is we got, we got to 
we've got a default our calendar, right? We've got to put stuff in our calendar that we habitually have to do. Instead of like being pulled all over the freaking place, we, we, we identified what were the most valuable things. That's really important, guys, because if you don't know how to identify the most valuable things, this is going to be difficult. But you need to identify the most valuable things and default them in your calendar so that you do it habitually, right? So that, you know, uh, example, Monday morning meeting, right? Like we get our team, like you, Alex, brother, we get, like Alex, I mean, how powerful has the Monday morning meeting been for you, man? Like, bro, it's huge, right? Every Monday, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, not Thursday, we do, you know, hey, Jeff, how's it going, brother? You know, we do a Monday morning meeting to get the guys on track, to get the guys knowing what a win and the losses and, and, and giving them what they need and looking back at the week. We do a Friday reflection meeting. Yeah, that's on Friday, not on Thursdays. So notice, after, after doing those things, they become habitual, right? So we've got to... We got to take the things that we need to be doing, get them off our list. So take a look at your list, okay? That to-do list. Yeah, I know it might be painful, it might be like kryptonite. And circle, highlight the items in there that if we could habitually default time to look at those things, if especially if they're reoccurring things, right? Quoting, that's a reoccurring thing. Anything that's reoccurring can be habitualized, right? Um, and then we want to look at the things that we need to start doing that's reoccurring, like looking at our financials. Not, okay, every once in a while, maybe every two months, maybe four months. No, no, on the 10th of the freaking month, right? So the 10th of the month, you're looking back, you've gotten all the data you need to know how you're progressing. Now, you got to know how to read those financials. You got to know, you know how to digest them, how to basically read the story. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it a great story? Um, but you got to habitualize stuff, guys. So what in your calendar, what on that to-do list could you put and default in your calendar that's a habitual thing that all of a sudden, guess what? It doesn't become a to-do list. It becomes something that eventually becomes the unconsciously competent, okay? Driving your vehicle, doing all those 50, 60 things that you do in your vehicle, even just driving two or five, 10 kilometers, is unconsciously competent things. They're things that you have learned how to do in a competent way without having to think about them. Pretty cool, right? So get that to-do list, rip that to-do list apart, habitualize the things that you can in that to-do list. And I'll tell you what, that is going to dramatically reduce your to-do list because a lot of those things on that to-do list are things that, um, are things that in doing those habitual things that you're going to be able to reduce on that list, right? Like having tons of freaking callbacks, right? It's going to be reduced if, you, if you're looking at your jobs on a regular basis, right? Um, if you're having that Monday morning meeting. Anyways, the list goes on. Okay, so that's Steve. Now what Steve is, and by the way, guys, he only started this like maybe a week ago, like seriously, and he's had this massive impact. It doesn't take long, right? Um, and he's less stressed. He's more focused. Um, he feels more in control. And here's the icing on the cake with this strategy. Okay, ready? Icing on the cake. Here we go. Your default calendar is not just for your business, guys. Jonathan, Jeff, Alex, it's not just for the business. Stop looking at defaulting this calendar as business related. You're like, what? Andrew, what are you talking about? Default your life, guys. Yeah, you, you know, I'm here at the gym. I'm not trying to boast. I'm not trying to brag, guys. I'm just saying I'm at the gym in front of a beer store. <laughs> Too funny. Um, and, and I've defaulted that right? Like I've defaulted my health, right? And I've decided that I'm going to take a heck of a lot more care in it. Um, about to turn 50 next year. And, uh, yeah, man, I want to, you know, default that success, right? Um, I, I want to default to going on a date with my, with my wife and doing things with my kids and mountain biking and all these different things. It's defaulted. So default your life, not just your work. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to be quick on the next two because, uh, I got to get rolling because it's Saturday and I'm gonna get home and we're gonna go out and uh, do a little bit of shopping with the kids and my beautiful wife. Okay, so here's the next couple. Um, next thing, I call it the deck of cards, okay? Let's take a, a look at, let, let's just, as an example, I'm only gonna use one example, you guys can apply this principle everywhere else. Here we go, okay? Call it the deck of cards. So imagine you got all these freaking quotes you gotta do, right? Like, you know, I know in my day and I know, I know with our, PFC family, I mean, there's constantly quotes coming in, right? You got tons of this, of these quotes you got to do. And uh, by the way, this strategy can be applied to, you know, any voicemails, any emails, anything, anything of that nature that, that builds up. Okay. If we just react to things, okay. And, and here's my, here's my man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at Tim. Uh, here's my man, Tim, where, 
we're looking at, you know, when he was faced with just too many things coming at him. Um, you know, big stack of quotes, uh, a, a big, big stack of voice messages, uh, and and basically what would happen is that when a quote would come in, he would he would like try to work on it right away. When a when a call would come in, he'd try and you know respond to it right away. Guys, that that I get, I get it, and I, and I understood it with Tim. He wanted to give the service that he wanted to his clients, to his team, but the reality was, he wasn't okay because. If we react to everything, then then we're in a state of chaos. Okay, just I'll be clear. If you react to everything, you're you're putting yourself in a state of chaos. So we want to go from chaos to control. So what did we do with Tim? Okay, Tim, freaking awesome guy. Actually, just a wicked video with Tim. Uh, he was on a trip there with his family. Uh, amazing. Anyways, um, and <laughs> during the busy time of the year, like isn't that awesome? So what did we do? Well. Instead of instead of just doing every quote as it comes, stack your quotes, guys. Stack your quotes like a deck of cards, right? As if we're playing poker. Stack your freaking voice messages, your emails, okay? Like, like stack them. Now, why do you want to stack them versus reacting to them? Well, let's look at it like we're playing poker. If I was to give you just one card and you react to that card, you've only got one card to base your judgment on, right? One card. That's it. What kind of decisions can you make with just one card? If I gave you... Um, you know, if I gave you a 10 uh, or a jack uh, or a couple of jacks, you might be like, hey, man, this, uh, you know, you know, what, like one jack at a time, you're, you're going to be looking at that going, okay, man, this is, this is a pretty good card. But what if we could grab that deck, imagine this, and we could almost like, almost like cheat, right? We could, we could take that deck and we could sort all the aces, right? We could sort all the kings. And then we get to play with the hand that we want. So when you look at things strategically, okay? And this brings me to the next story. But when you look at things in a with a strategic mindset, with a champion CEO mindset, the level of decisions that you can make, and guys, this can happen, you know, starting, you know, you know, some of you guys are working this weekend to catch up. Um, but whenever you're, you're, you're working, um, and you're looking at your quotes and you're looking at these opportunities and these emails, stack them, guys, okay? Give yourself enough of a gap. Now, that doesn't mean give your, wait for freaking two weeks to look at quotes. No, that's, that's being stupid, okay? But look at your quotes. This is why, back to what um, Steve did, defaulting your time to look at your quotes, defaulting your time to look at your emails, defaulting your time to um, check your voice messages allows you to basically play the deck of cards, play the game of poker, play the game of time and focus and ensure you're winning because you're only dealing with the things that you should be dealing with. Like, imagine being able to sort out, if we were playing a game of poker, all the twos, all the tens, and we only deal with the face cards, right? The best cards. Think about how much confidence that would give you, right? It gives you the ability to say yes to the right things, the ability to say no to other things, and the ability, by the way, even the things that you're saying yes to, to identify, do I need to focus in on this right now? Or do I need to focus in on this later on? Travis, brother, how's it going, man? Hey, guys. Uh, nice having you here Saturday. So that's strategy number two. Strategy number three. So uh, long story short, that's allowed Tim to um, be able to uh, offload, actually, a lot of this processing, this sorting the deck of cards, actually, to his team, right? These principles are not just for you guys. They're also... Uh, for your team members. And again, every one of these principles applies to not just business, but to your life. I mean, are you doing a whole bunch of shit in your life that's reactionary? Um, that's that's not the right level of value for you uh, in your personal life, right? Um, you know, little tiny things. Instead of eating an O. Henry bar, again, I'm not trying to be a preacher, I'm just saying, instead of eating an O. Henry bar, uh, we look at the deck cards and go get rid of that crap and let's go for a walk with my wife, right? I mean, I don't know. Sounds better than me. Um, or with the kids, right? Or do something, right? Okay, so let's go to the, the, the third one. Um, so Alex is on this call. Alex, I, I am choosing you, brother. Now, I know we're doing a, a wicked interview with you in front of the, uh, uh, in front of the Champion CEO group, uh, the PFC team. Uh, man, you've made some incredible progress. But here's one of the things that Alex did, okay? This is huge, guys. I'm just going to touch on it. Alex... Okay, was struggling in making profit. And his mindset, just one of the things of mindset, Alex, I know you're okay with me sharing this, dude, um, is uh, uh, 
knee-jerk reactions gets me into chaos. Yeah, totally, man. Totally gets you in the chaos. Um, and it's funny, knee-jerk reactions, you know, you know, it, it's not just it gets you into chaos, which you're so true. It's so true, Alex. It takes the freaking energy out of you, right? Like if you're always working off of adrenaline, and adrenaline's a great thing, but if you're always reacting, you're reacting off of adrenaline. That could be good adrenaline, bad adrenaline, but man, it's just fucking, like at the end of the day, you're just just exhausted versus like, hey man, look at all the shit, look at all the stuff I got done, and look at the, all the stuff I freaking decided not to do. Okay, moving on to Alex, my man. Alex is like, thumbs up, let's do it, Houston. Okay, let's do it, coach. All right, so guys, here's a big one. Systemize the routine, humanize the exceptions. So Alex, you know, working his ass off, incredibly great trades person, okay, and become an incredibly great champion CEO, business owner. Um, yeah, you know, he did amazing work, and he his company does amazing work with sheet metal. Guys, you see the work that Alex does. I'm not joking, man. Um, these roofs, these steel roofs, freaking amazing. I mean, the next roof I get, I'm serious, Alex, you can freaking put the steel roof on my freaking house, dude. Um, but um, anyways, long story short, he had, you know, he had five guys, then six guys, then seven guys, then eight guys. This is an absolutely true story. Alex, you tell me if I'm full of shit or not, dude. Um, and he just was working everything out of his head, going at the job sites, trying to do everything. You know, the mindset of, you know, if, if I want it done right, I got to do it myself. Okay, which is, that is bad, bad mindset. Okay, as far as being a champion CEO. So what did we do? We had a quick little chat, guys. You know, remember Alex, you, you, you downloaded, you got your hands on, and guys, I'll put this in the, uh, you know, the, the um, you know, PFC family's got this, the people in the contractor tips should have this, the contractor tips group, um, is the job site audit, all right? Job site cheat sheet, okay? Alex is no bullshit. Yeah, I love fucking no bullshit. So uh, the, the thing was, is that Alex was like, you know, when we first chatted with Alex, it was... You know, yeah, man, I need to, I need to get more sales. I need to, I need to get more guys. I want to be like that guy over there. And at the end of the day, when, when we started, you know, Alex, when we started challenging you on this, it was like, dude, it, 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 how long can your business run without you? And the response was not good, right? And the, the, when he, when his response was like, not even four hours, right? Definitely not a week. I was like, yeah, Alex, you've got a problem, dude. It's got nothing to do with you putting in the hours. It's got nothing to do with, you know, your solution is not getting more guys and getting more work. You, you, got, you got a lack, a significant lack of systems, man. So all this stuff is in your head. So once we started breaking down, even on the job sites, right? Job site cheat sheet and breaking down the strategies and how to apply those strategies on the job site cheat sheet. On, and guys, look, at, let me give you some insights. Running a job is not just fucking running a job. That is so not it. There are different phases of the job, okay? There's the pre-start, getting ready before you get on the field. And that's where Alex was like, oh my God, I never thought about that. I mean, how many things get dropped because it's all in your head at that stage, right? You don't hand off to the crews the right information. You don't set them the rules of the game, the expectations, how many hours. You, you don't, you know, it, it, you know, explain to them, here's the things that you need to, you know, fill in and paperwork and when. I mean, the list goes on, but think about it. Pre-start, then there's the running, then there's the finishing, okay? So... After looking at that job site cheat sheet, we were able to start breaking down, okay? What are the, you know, what are the, the common things, the simple things that we could put in place and systemize whereby which doing those habitually was going to give him amazing results. And when we started creating checklists and systems uh, with a super, with a, uh, with a free software, not mine, but a free software that hundreds of our clients use, uh, actually literally thousands of the top 5% of contractors use. It allowed him to hand things over to his team, out of his head, track them, uh, know what they're doing. But the problem was, A, he didn't really realize how that the things of him trying to solve the problem were not solving the problem, they were making things worse. So here we go. You guys ready for this? Ready? Alex, you tell me if it's no bullshit. Alex had eight guys. Okay, eight guys. Making money by starting to pay attention with the right set of glasses. You got it, man. The right set of lenses. Alex has got, I think, three or four guys. So let's just say four guys. He had eight. He's doing the same amount of sales. And when he had eight guys, he was, I think, I think it was negative 11% or something uh, around there. I think it was 11% negative 
uh, in profits, right? Alex is now positive 35% in profits, guys, net, with four guys. And the four guys are doing basically the same amount of sales, same amount of work. How the hell is that possible? Less equals more, guys, especially in the beginning of solving these problems because we think that more actually gives us less stress. In actuality, more actually gives us more freaking stress. So less for more, right, is the opposite of like more for less. I know it sounds like a little weird, but it's true, right? Alex is like, yep. Okay, guys, so this is it. I gotta get rolling. What time is it? Oh, I got 10 to 10, to 10 on my watch. So uh, time to rock and roll. I gotta get home, have a nice little brekkie, uh, go with the fam. You guys have a great day. If you guys want more tips like this, these the three tips right today was make sure you default your time, right? Uh, and, and remove your to-do list as much as possible. Make sure that you, um, you know, it, as far as, you know, systemizing, that you put the right steps in place with the right systems and the, and the right tools for your team. Um, and, you know, in all honesty, make sure that you've, you've got the right mindset, guys, around this. Don't think that you're alone. Don't think that you can't do this. These are simple things, okay? Consistently done give us exponential results. So Andrew Hughes in here from Prof for Contractors. If you want to get more insights like this, insights like this, uh, if you want to get that uh, job site cheat sheet, jump into the uh, uh, contractor tips group. I'll put a link down below for you guys um, and we'll put it in there for you guys. And for the champion CEOs that are listening in on this, love you guys. Um, you know, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to bring this to uh, so many other amazing contractors, great people that are in chaos, that are, that are struggling, they're feeling alone and they don't have to be. Alex says, organization and systemization eliminate unnecessary positions. Yeah, I mean, amazing, right? So imagine guys, he's got half the guys, right? How much less stress is that, right? And he's in a way more control um, and way more freedom. All, everybody that I, I talked about. All right guys, catch you later. Have a great weekend. Ciao.